Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Wet and Wet Flow, and today we talk about how to customize the slider element. Let's jump into it. Alright, so as promised, Wet n Webflow is like a deep dive into some of the projects that I'm working on. And as you found out on Monday, I'm working on a template that I want to provide to you for free. And in that template, we noticed something pretty cool. Uh, this slider area here. And so the deep dive here is going to allow me to fully explain some of the steps and tips that I, I, I completed and I can share with you. Alright, so as you can see, in this section, we have a slider, a regular slider. But this slider has a wrapper around it called slider mask. And as you can see, this slider mask is something that I added. So let's uh, create or add in a slider, a regular slider. So we'll grab a slider element. I can find it. Here's one. And all I did was as you can see, I added a div around this slider and named it slider mask. And the style that I added to the slider mask was overflow hidden and position relative. And this is because of the styles that I add within the slider itself. So as you can see, I'll delete this here and we can talk about the slider that we've implemented. So the actual slider container, as you can see, is 100% width and an auto height. And that's why we have this slider mask that is around it. And then within, we have an additional slider mask. And this is a regular slider mask that a, a, a slider element in Webflow comes with. And there's been some updates to the slider mask, as you can see. Um, it has a overflow instead of hidden which it normally has it has an overflow visible it has an overflow visible and this is because we have changed this slider mask to 50% because we want it to move um, elements within that slider so they're going to be 50% wide and we want them to move one at a time through the slider but we want those elements to be visible so if I click hidden we would no longer see other elements outside of this slider so that's why this is visible and there's additional slider mask above it so that we can control any type of elements outside of the slider and that's the uh, cool part that we didn't talk about on made for Monday now let's dig in deeper into some of the elements that we did talk about on Monday so as you can see here this is the structure that we utilize so that we can move these arrows. So right now we have regular slider navigation and we add it in and change them to position relative. So these are position relative navigation. And that is the biggest change that you'll notice. There's some other style changes that I did in order to create this look. But position relative is what I needed in order to use jQuery and move them into these div blocks because if they would have stayed position absolute because normally these are position absolute if I move and append these into this div block they would be in a location that I would not want them so I changed them to position relative and then I created this structure here that is within a wrapper that has flex style uh, placed on the parent element and then the child element also has flex style added so that I can place these elements to the right and center them. And then the div blocks, I gave them both an ID so that I can target them with my jQuery. Now let's take a look at our jQuery code. So as you can see here on document ready, we take the left arrow and the right arrow 
and append them into the div blocks. So that each div block has an ID, a specific ID, and each uh, arrow has a specific ID. And I take those IDs, call on them, and place them into the, the, these div elements here. Pretty easy, but pretty cool nonetheless. So hopefully this was helpful, and let's give a proper goodbye. That was pretty cool. Just a little jQuery allowed us to manipulate the navigation to place it in a place that better suited and better fit our original template. Hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. See y'all next week.